Hey there, welcome to my kitchen. Just cutting up a few ingredients for my omelet later on today. Some onions, some garlic, carrots. And I want to make a cucumber sandwich as well. I want to talk briefly about uh, really how to prolong the edges on your kitchen knives. We're going to, we invest some time into making them as sharp as we can. We thin them down. We make a razor sharp primary edge and then we start using them in the kitchen just like you've seen me use the knives here. The question is what really makes them dull? Is your knife going to go dull cutting garlic and onions on a proper cutting board? Uh, that's a great question. The truth is, is that the steel in the knives is so much harder than the cutting board that, uh, uh, and of course when you're cutting vegetables there's nothing really hard in those at all. Your edge should last for a very, very long time if you're cutting normal fruits, vegetables, meats on a proper cutting surface. Let me discuss real quickly, uh, this is not a proper cutting surface. This is granite or marble or it's a stone of some kind. And uh, sometimes what we see is when people get custom kitchens done and they get a sink installed, the cutout where the sink is going to go in uh, is, is left behind the, uh, you know, in the house and people think, oh, what a pretty cutting board. Well, if you want to lay out cheese and crackers on that uh, piece of cutout marble, if it's got nicely finished edges and you're just using a dull cheese knife on that, that's fine. But definitely you would never want to use any of your finer kitchen knives on any cutting board uh, that's made of anything other than, you know, one of the plastic cutting boards or a wooden cutting board or a bamboo cutting board, etc. Personally, I, I'm not too fond of bamboo, but that's just my pet peeve. Uh, let's talk about what really does dull knives in the kitchen. And let's talk about how do you know if your knife is dull? Well, obviously if you're trying to, if you're trying to cut something and it, it's just, you've really got to force it through and you've got to really saw through it, then obviously your knife is dull and needs to be sharpened. But another uh, quick way to check to see if your knife is dull or not, and here are some knives from around this kitchen, uh, you can actually hold the knife edge up like I'm holding here and you can look at the cutting surface. Now when I look at this knife, I see all sorts of shiny white spots all along, especially at the tip of each one of these serrations. And that's from where this knife has hit ceramic plates, uh, hit you know something probably hard like the, this granite countertop, probably uh, hitting other uh, pots, pans, uh, dishes, cups, and other silverware in the kitchen. But it's obvious, I can see it. Some of these other knives, you know, I can see a lot of damage. Some of the spots are very pronounced. Some of it is just a nice uh, a, a white line where basically the edge has been smushed flat and that's why it's reflecting light. When a knife is razor sharp like this one is, no light can reflect off of the edge. And if you don't have enough light inside, you can always go outside in the natural light and look at it. But don't, don't look at it from the side or from, from the end. You kind of want to be you want to kind of want the light to be above you. You want it reflecting off of the cutting edge and you kind of want to be over it to see what's going on. But that's, that's a, that'll be fun for you guys to go to your own kitchens and just look at your various knives and see, ah, oh, that's what Murray Carter is talking about. I can see the shiny spots on my blade. So what really makes your knives dull in the kitchen? We saw earlier I was cutting some garlic and in order to get it off the cutting board, I was kind of gathering it together on the cutting board. Well, you know, Theoretically, that's not really the best thing for the edge in this knife, but realistically, this is a wooden cutting board. This is a Rockwell 63 carbon steel cutting edge on this blade. That isn't really going to have uh, a, a big negative effect on your blade, uh, especially when you know how to sharpen it up. It's, it's really, I haven't found that to be detrimental. But you notice I'm not trying to sh scoop it up this way, in which case the cutting edge would actually dig into the board. I've got it more than 90 degrees leaned over and then when I change direction to bring it this way, I change that angle to bring it together. So, well, uh, not the best thing for your edge in practical use. I do it all the time and it doesn't seem to be a problem for me. Uh, what really is detrimental to your kitchen knives is a situation like this. When you've got them all kind of bundled together. They're all kind of bundled together in your drawer. You know, we can look in some of these drawers. We see 
you know, we can see lots of cutlery all jumbled together. If I put one of those paring knives in here, all sorts of hard things are going to be hitting the edge of that blade and dulling it. Uh, another is the dishwasher. You definitely don't want to put your blade in the dishwasher. Some people say, well, well, it says dishwasher safe right on the knife. Yeah, but if we look at the dishwasher and we pull out, you know, where the cutlery goes, if you, if you put this in there and, and every time someone else is opening and closing that dishwasher, that edge is banging against other metal pieces. That is just death to the fine edge of a knife. Even, even if the blade says dish, dishwasher safe, never put your blades in the dishwasher. And uh, it goes without saying, it goes without saying that we never want to put a hand forged, handmade knife in the dishwasher. Here's something else that you'll see commonly in a kitchen. You'll see a knife there and you'll see like a, a wine glass or uh, a cup or something like that. And over the course of an evening, th this happens. Things get pushed around, shuffled around, and again, your sharp edge is hitting, hitting things like glass and other plates. Uh, and, and don't ever do this. Oh, you want half an apple? Well, here, let me do that for you. And did you hear that? Right there where that tip of that knife just hit that plate, this ceramic plate is so many times harder than the steel in this knife. But now, right where the tip of that blade hit this plate, that edge is smushed absolutely flat. It's been crushed from, from an apex where it was sharp and it hit the plate and it was immediately deformed. So now I know that that's dull right there. In fact, I can, I can feel it. I can feel it's dull. Whereas before it was razor sharp. So no cutting donuts, no cutting things on ceramic plates. If you use your sharp knives on a proper cutting board, cutting normal foodstuffs, your knife is going to stay sharp way longer than you would have ever expected it to otherwise. So keep it out of the dishwasher, keep it out of the dish sink. Don't just ever drop your knife in the dish sink where it's going to hit all the other dishes and so on. Always hand wash. So this knife is dirty. Follow me over to the kitchen sink. I'm going to show you the best way to do this. You walk over, turn on the water, clean it off if you need to. You can clean it off with soap and water and a cloth. Immediately come over, dry it off, and put it in a place where it's not going to get dull. A, uh, a, a wooden butcher block is one option. A magnet on the wall is another option. You just want to be careful that uh, if your magnet is like this, you never want to stick it on from the edge first and then on the back. You always want to kind of put it on the spine first and let it attach this way. And then when you go to take it off, pull the cutting edge off first and then pull it away from the magnet. But really what I like, the system I like is I always make room for the box that the knife came in, in one of these drawers. And after you've used it, and rinsed it off and wiped it off. You can simply open your drawer, put your knife away, and now that knife is in a nice protective environment where nothing is going to be banging against it. When I need the knife, I just open it up, grab it, and use it. Now, one other option, one other option in the kitchen, especially if there aren't a whole lot of other people in the house where you're living, if you want to store your kitchen knife so it's quick and accessible, is to uh, take a towel and you can uh, put the towel, for example, I'm gonna follow me over to the kitchen sink. You could put your towel right here in front of your kitchen sink. And that's not a bad resting spot for your knife as well. Because you can rinse it off, you can shake it off or dry it off and put it back there. The great thing about using a towel in a place like that is if there's a little drop of water on it or whatever, it's going to air dry. The towel's going to absorb the water. 
Um, but this is, this, is, this is not an uncommon technique, especially in Japan. And then you've got one or two knives that are immediately handy uh, and they're nice and protected and nothing else is around them. So that is just a little bit of information on how you can change your habits in your kitchen in order to prolong the sharpness of your knife as long as possible. And if you want to learn how to master sharpening, you might meet us down in San Antonio, Texas, February 1st and 2nd for our sharpening workshop down there. This is Murray Carter saying, stay sharp.